This is the biggest electric car test in the world. It's done annually by probably the best electric car magazine in the world based in Norway. So they have access to more than 100 electric cars. However, they usually test around 32 different electric cars, usually the most popular ones, and some left of field cars from NEO, BYD, and Xpeng, and even some other Chinese brands as well. However, this year there were some shockers, some that I am utterly baffled by. I cannot understand how their results were so bad in comparison to some of the other EVs who had phenomenal results. One of them, the Nissan Aria, very surprising results from Nissan. The real world range of a bunch of electric cars was just tested in Europe. And it's very interesting to see what the results were, in particular of the most popular electric car in the world, the Tesla Model Y. The Tesla Model Y in its base variant that sells in Europe, UK, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Israel, Thailand, China, Japan, pretty much everywhere outside of the United States now. It's even the model you can get now in Canada. It's been tested, so was the Model S, but really I think of more interest to us here is the Model Y of this lithium ion phosphate version. What is the real world range? Is it what Tesla claims? It's, to be honest, mind blowing. I mean, one reviewer, I just watched a video uh, tonight actually, a long video of someone testing the Model Y. This is a different video. And they were just blown away by the range in their Model Y. Now this is a car reviewer who reviews cars for all petrol powered cars and whatever different cars. They were blown away by the efficiency of the Model Y in comparison to all other electric cars. And what really surprises me is the fact that this is a lithium ion phosphate battery. It shouldn't be this efficient. It should have far less energy density than it does. How on earth are Tesla actually doing this? I'm personally utterly baffled to how this is possible. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, what surprised me the most about this test is the fact that the BYD Addo 3, which has a battery pack, which is about the same size or maybe a little bit bigger than the battery pack in the Tesla Model Y, which is a much bigger car, actually got a lot less range. Shocking. The, I, uh, I'm totally baffled by this. It's basically the same battery. And yet, in a much bigger car, the Model Y, the range was much further. This test was carried out in Europe by testers who have nothing to do with Tesla, make no money out of Tesla, and they tested a bunch of electric cars. The vehicle with the most range uh, and the most range of any car that they've tested was the Tesla Model S. It's got 672 kilometers, but I don't think many people are buying uh, Model S's. They're just a bit out of most people's price range, which is fair enough. So let's have a look at the other cars. They said, for one, most cars had a loss of around 15%. So 15% less is what they got in the real world range compared to what they actually claim in real life. It's very different to the claims. Now, first of all, I should point out, they didn't hyper mile. They didn't just drive along slowly, trying to go as far as they could. They did normal driving. They even drove through the mountains. Uh, pretty normal driving that you would do on a daily basis. And the Subaru Solterra, which is basically the same car as the Toyota BZ4X, although Subaru doesn't want you to think that. They say it's a true off-road, four-wheel drive, electric SUV. Not really correct. It's just a Subaru Solterra, which is a Toyota BZ4X with different badges and some different body cladding. Anyhow, there were five cars that had a negative depreciation, they say, or achieved around 15% less than their claimed range. Those were the BYD Han, the Neo EL7, the Toyota BZ4X with front wheel drive, the BYD Addo 3, and the Subaru Solterra. However, the reason the BZ4X only lost 15% of range and, and it was losing 30 to 40% on its previous test is because Toyota have changed the car. They've now increased the amount of battery you can use in the pack. So before they had a pretty big buffer, they've reduced the buffer and now it's getting more range basically because it has access to more battery. So as you can see here, they've tested a whole lot of cars. This is a pretty amazing test. They've tested 32 different cars on the one day basically. Incredible. I did this last year as well, and I made a video about that test last year. So if you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description below. Surprisingly, the Polestar 2, which is a fairly heavy car, got a really good range. It got 
601.7 kilometers before it stopped, which was only 2% less than its claimed figures. In third place was the NEO ET7. It got 580 kilometers, which is actually 1.6% more than NEO claims. However, shockingly, the car that got more range than its claims by the largest percentage was actually the Xpeng G9. The G9 got 587.8 kilometers, which was 13% more than Xpeng claim. Pity that they'll be bankrupt by the end of the year. I didn't just say that, did I? No, they're struggling a little bit. And unfortunately, Neo and Xpeng, both good cars, as you can see in terms of range, are not selling in, in Europe at all. They're, um, yeah, people aren't, aren't buying them. Now, one of the cars probably that shocked me the most, I would say, was the Nissan Ariya. The Ariya got 581 kilometers, which was 9% more than what Nissan claimed. Unbelievable. Its actual claims are 533 and somehow got 581. That's incredible. Next was the BMW i7. It actually got 2.2% less than its claims, which are 594 kilometers, but it got 580.7. Bit of a strange scenario here, isn't it? I mean, the i7 costs what, like 300,000 Australian dollars? I think it's about 200,000 US dollars. A lot of money. It's one of the most expensive EVs in the world. The Nissan Ariya is is far from being one of the most expensive EVs in the world. It gets 9% more than its claims to beat the i7, and the i7 gets less than its claims to lose to a much cheaper EV. Now, I'm not saying that Aria is better than the i7. I'm just saying you'd feel a little bit ripped off if you just paid 200,000 US dollars for this car, and it got beaten by a Nissan Aria. Next was the Mercedes-Benz EQE. That got 578 kilometers on their range test, which was almost the same as its claimed range of 579, so a 0.2% difference. That was followed by the Mercedes-Benz EQS. Surprisingly, it got exactly the same range as it claims, 577 kilometers. Unfortunately, the Hyundai Ioniq 6 was next. Now, Hyundai have said this is the, the king of efficiency, one of the most efficient cars ever made, if not the most efficient car ever made. Unfortunately, this test didn't prove that that was the case. Its claimed range is 614 kilometers. In the test, it got 567, which is a negative 7.7%. So it seems to me as though maybe the Ionic 6 performs really well in certain conditions, but those conditions weren't met in this test. But what's strange about this is that cars like the Nissan Ariya were getting so much more range than their claims. You would think that this would probably be a good scenario for the Ionic 6, but it wasn't. Interestingly, Tesla's Model X Plaid got 546 kilometers. Its claim is 543 kilometers, so it achieved 0.6% more than its claims, which is surprising considering the Tesla Model S did so well. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, the Model S was in first place with 673 kilometers, but that was an increase of 6% versus its claimed range. And strangely, the Model X only had an increase of 0.6 versus the 6% for the Model S. Now let's have a look at the cars that were the most disappointing. One of them was the BYD Han. The Han sedan from BYD is, I think, actually a pretty good car. However, its range was way less than claimed. BYD says it gets 521 kilometers. However, it only traveled 452, which is minus 13.2%. The Tesla Model Y didn't quite match its claims. It got 449 kilometers, which is six kilometers less than they claim. The claim is 455. That means it was negative 1.3. However, five kilometers less than claimed is, I think, a pretty good result for the most popular car in the world. And I think that's why um, I'm talking about this because it's the most relevant to buyers. What's the real world range of your Tesla Model Y? probably around 449 kilometers approximately, which is good to know. The other thing that's good to know is Tesla does recommend you charge that battery to 100%. So even though some of the cars in front of the Model Y achieve more range in the real world, whether or not they actually achieve that range, well, it depends on whether or not you're willing to charge to 100%. Most people are not because they feel like they're gonna get battery degradation if they don't have a lithium ion phosphate battery and they're charging their battery to 100%. So it's possible that the Model Y's range, the base Model Y's range, is actually a really good number considering most people are gonna be charging that to 100% because Tesla tells you to do that regularly. Same thing goes for the BYD Addo 3. Unfortunately though, the Addo 3 had a very short day. 
And what surprises me the most about the 803 is that in Europe, its claim range is only 420 kilometers. Now, BYD say its claim range is around 450, approximately give or take, in most countries outside of Europe. It's exactly the same car. So I don't know why the claim range is 420 in Europe and outside of Europe it's 450. But anyway, the key point here is either way, its performance was quite disappointing. Now, if you compare it to its claims outside of Europe, it was horrendously bad. 364 kilometers, 364, its claim is 420 or 450, depending on which whose numbers you're looking at. Either way, that's a minus of a minimum of 13.3%. But what shocks me the most here is this is a much smaller car than the Model Y. It's using basically the same battery pack. How on earth is this possible? I don't understand. I, I mean, it's when I say it's much smaller, I own one. I can tell you, I've been in a Model Y, I've been in the 803. It's way smaller. It's not even close. I, I'm, I'm just baffled by this test. Listen, I know what people are going to say, the engineering is better on the Model Y, but it doesn't justify the fact that it's so much bigger using the same battery pack and getting so much more range. I mean, we're talking nearly 90 kilometers here. That is just truly bizarre. Anyhow, let's move on. The other vehicle which performed as equally badly as the Addo 3 was the BZ4X. Now, Addo 3 buyers should at least be, you know, happy that at least they only didn't pay a whole lot of money for their car. The BZ4X cost quite a bit more money than the BYD Addo 3. Toyota's EV, even though it's had its range increased by, or not its range increased, but its usable battery capacity size significantly increased, continues to show pretty shocking results. Many of its competition were getting plus 10%. It got minus 14%. Claimed range, 503 kilometers. It did 434. On the other hand, the Kia EV6 GT, which is the performance edition of the EV6, it's basically the direct competitor to the Tesla Model Y performance. It got 424 kilometers of range versus its claim of 424, exactly the same distance. Now you're probably wondering why is the Kia EV6 only getting 424 kilometers of range? It's got a pretty big battery pack and you'd be right. Well, the key reason is because it's quite heavy. It's around about 300 kilos heavier. In fact, I think 350 kilos heavier. That's about 750 pounds than the Tesla Model Y. So that's the key reason why its efficiency is significantly lower. It uses 20.6 kilowatt hours of energy per 100 kilometers driven. In terms of actual range traveled, last place went to the Subaru Solterra. It did 360 kilometers versus a claim of 416 kilometers. So it's the smaller battery pack version and it has all wheel drive. I mean, to be honest, I don't really know why anyone would buy a Solterra considering that range of 360 kilometers versus the price you're paying. It doesn't make any sense in my opinion. There's definitely much better choices. I mean, for example, the standard Kia EV6 or a standard Ionic 5 or a Tesla Model Y, all of them are significantly better cars than the Solterra or the BZ4X. And I really think if you're gonna buy a Subaru or a, Sol or a Toyota, don't buy one of those two. As you can see, this is a phenomenal test. The fact that they test 32 cars on the same day, the same route at the same time is the most impressive electric car test in the world. The figures here are pretty surprising to me. And it gives you a good, a really good indicator of which cars you should buy and which ones you shouldn't. At least that's what I think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.